call the meeting to order for the uh, council meeting for February 1st. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. It looks like I got two, are you high school or yep. you want to lead us in the pledge? <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone. Thank you for leading us in the pledge. Uh, Jenny, if you could take the roll. Councilmember Thorson? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Councilmember Wong? Here. Councilmember Cole? Here. Mayor Furlong? Here. Quorum is present. Uh, at this time, motion to adopt the agenda. So moved, Your Honor. Moved by Councilmember Peterson. Second. Second by Councilmember Thorson. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, at this time, we have the consent agenda, and I'll turn it over to uh, City Manager Stark. Thank you, Mayor Furlong. Uh, tonight we have uh, on the consent agenda several separate items which will be acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and recommended actions are also approved and no further action would be necessary. However, any City Council member may uh, request that a uh, item be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular uh, agenda for discussion. And tonight we have six items on the consent agenda. Uh, item A, the January 18th, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Item B, general claims in the amount of $1,263,645 and some cents. Item C, HRA claims in the amount of $1,106 uh, plus dollars. Item D, EDA claims in the amount of $6,404 and, and some cents. Uh, item E, the rehab of well number two, and item F, the 2022 street and utility improvement project paved voucher number 15. Uh, and that concludes tonight's consent agenda. Thank you. So at this time, if a council member would like to pull an item, they can do so at this time. Not a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by council member Cole. Second. Second, Second by council member Wong. Uh, any discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. This time the meeting is open to the public. I do have a couple. John Schmall. Welcome, John. Evening? No, it isn't. It's afternoon. Early uh, evening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mayor, Council. Uh, two items that I, uh, one quick one is the, uh, an article in the North St. Paul, or news at northstpaul.org, uh, which was uh, an announcement under upcoming community events. First of all, I don't know what the rules are as to what is the community, how big is our community uh, area-wise. But uh, it was an open house for a presentation of Mary Catholic School that appears to be a problem with separation of church and state, as far as I'm concerned, uh, saying that it included attendance at a mass and whatnot. I just have a problem with us advertising the, uh, something that's the intent of trying to get students into a parochial school. That's up to them. I have no problem if this was a a uh, uh, fundraiser, like all uh, organizations seem to have these days, but uh, to try to sign up students in a parochial school, I don't think should be part of our newsletter. Just a comment. Uh, second item is, is the website is gonna drive me over the edge without any doubt in my mind. And the subject this time is uh, archived records. Uh, since the city has left this northeast met or north metro internet, whatever it was called, um, about a month ago I was talking to Carrie to try to figure out what was going on, and we came. Uh, my question was on archived records, and there is the only thing I can find on the uh, website is one year, and that's it. So I said, Carrie, where's the rest of this? And she says. It's on a hard drive in my desk. 
So that doesn't seem to be the proper place for archive records. Somebody should have thought about what was going to happen when you left this organization. What's going to happen to the records? Where were they? Where are they? Well, they're on a hard drive in Carrie's desk. And I thought after bringing it up, something would have come up to fix it, but it's not, there's nothing there. You can only go back a year. And uh, I said, well, the cloud, let's put it on the cloud. That costs money. But at the retreat, con uh, Council Member uh, Thorson brought up something about peg fees. So we're supposed to be getting money. I would imagine you can cover the cloud with this, but it, it's very frustrating to go and try to find something and you can't find it. Appreciate it. Uh, RT. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, minor updates today. I think I did email all of you about some of the heat issues that we're having at the facility right now. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Ron. Ron has been amazing. Um, he is there whenever anything comes up. Um, he's up on the roof, and it's literally 30 below with the wind chill, and he's up there trying to get the heat running again. Um, that said, when you guys are having your discussion later today, I would like you to discuss that portion of the lease and making sure that there's some type of verbiage in there about the heat going out. It sounds like one of the parts, there's two heaters, one's working, one's not. The part's 10 weeks away. What happens if the other one goes out? Um, just like some type of language in there that'll address that would be wonderful. Um, and my, my uh, brother owns a big warehouse. It, it, they can't get the part. Exactly. Like and exactly. That's what he said. Johnson Control and, uh, says it's like it's ten coming, weeks it's away. Out of Iowa or something. Yeah. And, they can't and, get it. and he even said something about like, well, if you're going to replace it, well, that's like thirty-six weeks away. Um, so something in there that, that that's okay. Something in there that addresses that. Yep. Um, and then the other portion, as you guys were kind of talking about earlier, it sounded like there's a there's a delay in things right now, like chips and pretty much everything, um, which means there's also a delay in our building process um, as we navigate our time ending here in North St. Paul and moving into a new space. Um, there's a delay there, and it looks like that delay might wind up being three months or six months. Um, and we were wondering if the council could put something in the lease to address that possibility. Um, if we can extend for a short amount of time, uh, if the building that we're moving into isn't quite ready yet. Um, but something for discussion to, um, as I know, I had a, a good conversation with uh, Mr. Stark today. And he said that um, developers can handle a couple things. They can handle a, a quick yes and a quick no really well, but a, a long I don't know is something that's a challenge. Um, and that's the same thing for us. Um, and I don't know, and if the council hasn't yet prepared a plan for this building, we're a sure thing. Um, we know that we're gonna be there at least through 2020, the end of 2022, um, and we can be there for another six months after that, that's a guarantee, which will allow the council time to develop that plan and go from it being an I don't know to a hey, we have this plan and we're ready to move forward with it. And we can have a date that we can strive to develop our programming, your programming, uh, to get into that building. So, but if you could, and I, and I think that uh, we'll have a little bit of discussion on that. That's great. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody on Zoom? Nobody else. You guys want to talk to us? Come on. Okay. <laughs> you can hold off. Uh, so at this time we have. Uh, Nobody on Zoom will go to uh, city business and action items, uh, and I'll turn it over to city manager Stark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. Actually, I'm going to turn this right over to city attorney Soren Matic. Uh, Soren and a couple of council members have been uh, serving as kind of a committee to work on a lease um, with, uh, I always get the name wrong, Kokoro? Kokoro. Kokoro Volleyball. Um, and so I ask... Uh, City Attorney Maddox to give you the update and uh, talk about the lease that he's put together. Thank you. So I, we've been working on this for a long time. We've had a lot of meetings on this um, as a council, both well on various aspects of the building and working with Kokoro. Uh, we did form a committee with Lisa and Tim. I've been working uh, with the two of them to go over these terms uh, of the lease that's before you. 
Uh, I think in general sense, and RT can correct me, but I've emailed this version to RT and we have general agreement on it. I haven't heard a no. Um, the kind of the big level, this is meant to be for a year. I think originally the committee had thought that they'd want to get Kokoro through uh, this season, which would have been more of a May, June, July termination of the lease. Uh, RT had indicated that you know they were looking at a new space and that space would be ready by the end of the year. Uh, and so that's why we did set it up for a uh, December 31st termination. Um, we haven't ruled out any holdover or things like that. It's also not something I've spent a lot of time discussing with the committee. Uh, I did pass along RT's note uh, that that may be something they're looking for. But as written, the lease does not guarantee any right to hold over. It terminates at the end of the year. Uh, and that's originally what had been discussed. In terms of the HVAC unit, the, the lease does uh, indicate that it is the city's responsibility to fix those things. It does talk about uh, un um, interrupted or uninterrupted times. Uh, you'll see that in Article 6. So the city does have a, an obligation to fix that. I think RT had originally sent me a note saying, hey, where are you going to locate us? I'm not aware that the city has anywhere to put them. Uh, so it may uh, result in some temporary measures to provide some heat during this time should the HVAC unit shut down or make it so it's impermissibly cold. Um, beyond that, I would stand for any questions if we want to go into the exact terms. I mean, basically, it is set to be for a year long, all of 2022. Uh, it does have Kokoro paying for the taxes that are now generated. As we know, the county has taken the position that because it's a, a for-profit entity that taxes are to accrue. So the, the rent stays the same, if you will, uh, that it's always been. It's twelve five a month, uh, but there are going to be some taxes. We have estimates on those. Uh, I believe they're going to be in the realm of $55,000. Uh, Kokoro knows that they are responsible for those and has agreed to pay those. Um, I think the unfortunate part about the taxes, if you will, are it's an, an additional expense to Kokoro, uh, but there's no additional revenue to the city on that side of things. So it is structured as a short-term lease. Uh, I do think they plan on uh, moving on to a new facility. We can talk holdover over if we want. Uh, there's nothing additional put in there regarding the heat. It is something the city's responsible for as the landlord and owner of the building. Um, I'd stand for any questions on it. Otherwise, it's my hope that we would adopt this lease tonight and move on from it. Um, certainly, if there's other things we need to do as a landlord to assist, um, we, we should um, as it relates to the utilities and things like that. Um, but I do think, given the nature of the activity and the use of that building, uh, from my perspective, it is important to have a written agreement in place. Um, and that's what this does and accomplishes. And to my knowledge, it's acceptable to Kokoro and RT based on our previous emails. Are we able to amend the lease at, say, like September, October? You know, I'm just thinking if we weren't able to find a tenant or we don't know what that plan is yet. You know, now that we know that there's a, an end of this, we're going to start discussions in regards to, you know, the use of, of that facility. Yep. And to his point, if he needs a little time after the first of the year and we don't have a tenant lined up at that time, uh, we could amend the lease to offer some sort of month or, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. Two parties can always sit down and agree and amend anything. Yep. I, anything's probably too broad, but in this particular instance, yeah, if it comes September, if it looks like the, they're not going to be able to get into the new, their new facility and the city's willing to, certainly they can, we can sit down, determine the price, duration, all of those particulars. My only concern in RT is uh, if we have someone, say in October, goes, no, we want it on the first of the year, our hands are kind of tied. That's, that's my concern. If we don't have anybody, I don't think the council would, uh, myself, I wouldn't be concerned about extending it as long as we don't have a tenant lined up, yep. if that makes sense. So we could always amend it. Yeah, we, we, can, we can review that, absolutely. But I do want to make it clear that, as written, this lease terminates at the end of the year. Correct. Um, but if we choose to extend it, we can. That would just be a simple amendment to the lease. We basically, from my perspective, when we start amending things like that for a short term is what I assume this would be, 
you just you, you do a simple two-page amendment that basically says all other terms and conditions of the lease apply. Here's how long you'll be in there. Here's how much you'll pay, uh, you, and you go from there. Right. But it's it's that simple, in my opinion, if you want to. Sure. Any other questions for Soren, Councilmember Thorson? <clears throat> yeah, just out of curiosity, I, I don't recall the exact date that this ad hoc committee was formed, but I want to say it was. Was it September, October of 2021? Is that kind of the ballpark, or was it June? A, June. It June. Okay. What, what, was there something that was particularly hanging up that it's taken so long to get it, this lease in front of us now? Or I mean, well, in June we were dealing with a lot of things other than this lease agreement, candidly, Councilmember Thorson, and so I don't think as a committee we spent a lot of time on this. We were dealing with a lot of personnel issues. I don't recall when we actually met for the first time. Uh, I think Brian sent out a letter to RT sometime in August is my recollection, uh, and that got things moving a little bit. I think there was a misunderstanding between RT and Brian and myself in terms of exactly where we were at on it, who we should be dealing with. So we had a, I consider a constructive meeting to sit down and clarify our positions and then start to work through this. I believe we met two times, two or three times, um, to kind of go over terms. I think initially there was a desire to have a longer term lease. Um, when we looked into that and I worked with the committee to start crunching some numbers, the numbers we came back just simply didn't work for Kokoro. And it was at that time we met a second time and we came up with the uh, solution of doing a one year term. So that's. That's kind of the to in and fro in, if you will. It was it was hard, candidly, last fall, without you know Brian was doing the best he could on the interim basis, but we were dealing with collective bargaining agreements, we were dealing with lease agreements. There was a lot of sort of long term decisions we were trying to make with an interim city manager. So I do think that impacted it, and that's not a reflection of Brian. It's just you kind of want to just float the boat and make some temporary decisions. So there wasn't any <clears throat> particular item that was causing it. It was just more of a scheduling and workload conflict. Okay. From my perspective. Okay. Any other questions for Soren? If not, uh, we have the lease before us, and that would be as stated. And I'm not going to amend it at this time, but I think as we go through the process and as we determine what's going to happen to that building, as we get closer, you know, into the fall or whatever, if we got nothing going on, RT, I don't think the council has any problem, you know, going, extending out, unless we have somebody that comes in and says, we want this on 1-1 of 2023, then I think we would, you know, honor that for someone. Sure. Can I can I just ask you to come up and because no one can hear if you want to just address the council at the microphone. Thanks. Um, so if the council is open to it, uh, we would definitely even I mean, we'd sign something. Let's say let's say our builder gets back to us in three months and says, hey, Yep, it's going to be a year from today. Um, if we were to come to the council and say, "Hey, you know what? It's a year from today. Got anything going on?" I mean, we might we might be able to come back in three six months and let you know. That might be around. I mean, summer, um, and we wouldn't be opposed to what the council proposed initially. With, hey, to secure this, well, we're going to go to year two or whatever it was and pay whatever year two was instead of year one. Um, so we can make sure that the council is getting what they wanted initially as well, um, and also a little more security on our end for those six months too. So um, I guess look to hear from us in the next three months or six months. So I think a lot of communication between the two of us yeah, as, as sure. we go forward because yeah. we don't know where you're going to be and you don't know where we're going to be. Correct. We need to work together. Exactly. So yep. I agree. And I will, I'll be happy to send that off as soon as we have information so the council can make a decision. and. 
like I said, if that means for us to secure it, we have to pay year two's rent for that extra three months or six months, well, okay, we'll work that out as a, as a council and, and Kokoro. So. But if we get somebody who comes in here oh, yeah. in June and says yeah. we need it at that time, yeah. we'll be yep. in communication. If we, don't have, if we don't have something signed before then or whatever, well, yeah, that's what we agreed to. We agreed to the 31st, and that's what we agreed to. So, but Work together. Yep, sounds good. Thanks, RT. So at this time, uh, the motion would be to accept the, uh, the lease agreement with Kokora Volleyball, the one-year lease. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Council Member Wan. Second. Second by Council Member Cole. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. City Manager, start. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for my city manager report uh, this evening, I would just note that um, I did send a, a memorandum along with your packet discussing staffing at the police department. Um, and just to summarize, the, the budget uh, contemplated two community service officers that were each going to be part-time uh, folks. And you know the reality of the situation is a little different than it looked in the budget. Uh, as you know, um, Policing and public safety employees are are hard to recruit right now. It's a difficult um, it's a, it's a difficult occupation. Uh, there are f fewer and fewer people that are going into it, and the situation on the ground is that um, Police Chief uh, Phil Babenroth um, did open up the. Uh, we have one part-time community service officer CSO who's an excellent employee. Uh, they're rather new, but they've been an, an excellent employee thus far. Um, and he, the chief opened up the other position for interviews, uh, for recruiting, was very um, dissatisfied with the pool of applicants, um, approached the existing uh, CSO, uh, inquired about his uh, interest in going full-time, and so we've made the decision to, instead of having two part-time CSOs, to consolidate that into one position. Um, that's not a permanent change. Uh, within the budget, uh, we feel like we can vary that over time um, if as people come and go so it gives us some flexibility so i just wanted to update you on that um, action uh, i had planned on having fire chief jason mallinger here tonight to talk about kind of the year in the fire department with the fire calls and emt calls um, because of the shortened what we thought was going to be a shortened um, time frame uh, i asked uh, chief mallinger to to defer that to another day i, I wish i would have uh, known this was going to go so quickly, we would have had him here. Zoom it all, or oh. <laughs> um, so that concludes my report for tonight. Okay, Thanks. good, thank you. Uh, so at this time, we have the uh, uh, reports of council and commissions and committees. Uh, council Member Cole. Uh, Park and Rec met on January the 26th. The primary purpose uh, of, of the meeting was to review and incorporate the recommendations uh, that were put forth by the Planning Commission that would help align the, um, basically all the documents that we have. <laughs> there, there's a, lot, a, a lot of things didn't necessarily overlap the, the um, yeah. Um, we had different sizes of parks and acreages and terminologies, and um, the the, uh, uh, the planning commission came up with some very good wording, also that would help um, bring all of our commission bring bring all of our improvement plans together. Um, the we had a, a representative from WSB who attended both the planning commission meeting as well as um, the park and rec meeting, so she was the liaison between the two parties. That understood. Um, the meetings from both sides. Um, they went. Th we've, the, the group went through, uh, took some of the recommendations under control, and impl implemented them, and passed on a couple of the other ones. Um, nothing, nothing major. Uh, the improvement plan is now back with WSB for finalization. Hoping to have a final vote on it at the February meeting and have it in front of uh, council for a workshop early March. Just to let you know, back. When I was on the Park and Rec Commission, we put together our plan, and I believe we had an outside person do it, and 
we had a joy park to it. So we did add another park, but that's not the way to acquire parks, I guess. You just don't add them to your list. So yeah. we we had to take joy park off. We, uh, yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> and we still had three parks that were not in the park improvement plan that were identified as parks in uh, an, another document, and so we're probably going to have to have to have a conversation about those three parks. One of which is the little itty bitty one with the tree. <laughs> um, so it's it's in the it'll it's in the plan out. as a park. It'll get worked out. <laughs> so worked out. Uh, we've got a little bit a little bit to go there. Uh, they had the election of officers as well. Uh, chair remains Lloyd Grishik, and vice chair is Laura Greenlee Carp. Um, and that takes care of, of what took place for the park and rec. Uh, Silver Lake Improvement Association, they have their annual upcoming meeting this Monday, February 7th. It'll be via Zoom, and I believe it was 6.30. I gotta go back and double check. Um, it is their annual election of officers, as well as there was an agenda produced uh, to cover off some additional topics as well. All are welcome to join. All are welcome to donate and belong to uh, the Silver Lake Improvement Association as well. Uh, I believe the information for joining is, is on our city website. I'm getting a nod. Thank you. Uh, and their next meeting will be April 11th. So they meet every other month on the second Monday. Okay. And I didn't update the EDA. So pause. Keep moving. <laughs> Let me go back and read my notes. Come back to you? Yeah, All unless right. you want to take it. Uh, no, you can have it. Uh, Council Member Wong. Sure, thank you. Um, so the Planning Commission is um, slated to meet on Thursday at 6.30 here in the Chambers. Um, the last conversation was particular to the sign ordinance and that will be continued in this following meeting as well. And then we'll also um, re uh, revisit the street cafe and the parklet um, uh, application and um, uh, design to finalize that. Um, and then uh, we are looking to um, find a new chair at this next uh, meeting. So we will be voting on that. Um, and we have also a few um, candidates that had applied to the Planning Commission. Um, and so those applications are closed and then we'll review them soon uh, so that will close yeah real soon here so if there's anybody out there who's looking at joining the planning commission get your application in as, as soon as possible mm -hmm. thanks um, as for the arts and culture commission um, our city attorney reviewed the bylaws and um, pretty much finished with that and then their next meeting is tomorrow at 6 30 in sandberg um, the other, the last meeting, we, there is also discussion about um, how to accept a new project, um, what the process would look like, and what kind of criteria that they would need to kind of prioritize um, which which um, projects would be on um, on the list. So um, there was a lot of discussion about the craft wagon. I think some people here are familiar with the craft wagon. It's um, something that's been around for a while. So there's discussion about bringing that back. Um, and then as for the master redevelopment plan, we had a meeting last night. Um, and it looks like we're looking about a June timeline as we're um, kind of revisiting and reframing the, the um, packet. And that's all I have. Good, thank you. Council Member Peterson. Yeah, I had a... Um of uh, Minnesota City's board meeting last week, last week, and um, they talked about civility, and um, they're going to concentrate that in their uh, annual conference up in Duluth in June. So I encourage all you teammates to go up to Duluth and network and learn a lot of things. Um, the business association meeting will be uh, next Tuesday, uh, February eighth at noon at the Legion, and the main speaker will be Robert Dew from the Dew Building, talk about EDA, so that should be interesting. And um, that's all I have, thanks. Councilmember <clears throat> Thorson. Yeah, just we met on Monday for the redevelopment master plan, as Councilmember Wong stated, um, and that I'll just add that our next meeting is on uh, the last Monday of February on the 28th. 
Uh, Councilmember Cole. All right, I'm ready. Thank you. Apologize. Um, the EDA met on January 11th at 3 o'clock in the Sandberg Room. Primary topic was interest and development of a city-owned parcel at uh, just right across the street at 2395 Margaret. We had a presentation from a development group for what they envisioned that property to look like. Um, and there was no decision or discussion other than their presentation. And that, for the most part, was the majority of the meeting. Thank you. And I had a uh, meeting with the uh, uh, local police chiefs and uh, a couple of mayors in the community and with uh, the city attorney, John Choi, in regards to the crime that's been happening uh, within our communities uh, throughout the year and how uh, we're going to try to respond to it. Uh, number one, legislation is going to be ramping up here and hopefully be able to uh, do something with, the, with in regards to catalytic converters being stolen and try to figure out legislatively how they can uh, stop that. Not stop it, but at least try to reduce it. Uh, the other uh, topic was the uh, juvenile delinquency in regards to uh, car thefts, and a lot of them are, are juveniles. A lot of them are under 18 years old and how to uh, respond to that. And it, uh, the uh, city attorney, Choi, is uh, working with the police chiefs, and he really wants to try to solve these, these problems, uh, especially with the, uh, the uh, juvenile delinquents and with the, uh, with the schools, uh, working with the resource officers. Uh, but also, uh, there's a point system that happens when uh, juveniles get caught doing something, and, and part of this point system is, is pretty dated far back, and what they want to do is update that point system so that when you do steal a car, that it, it does uh, trigger some sort of response that there will be consequences in regards to uh, theft of vehicles. So that's one one topic uh, that they're going to be trying to solve the problem. Uh, the other one is, uh, you know, they closed Totem Town and another uh, facility in Hennepin County uh, a few years ago, and they're looking at possibly not reopening Totem Town, but reopening something that these kids can go to within the metro area. Right now, if they do have to go into a uh, some sort of facility. It could be in Red Wing. It could be up north. You know, they want to make it so that if they do get uh, put into one of these places that it's within the community so that the families can be involved with the kids that they're close by. So that's uh, the other point that uh, the police chiefs and uh, the city uh, attorney are, are going to be working on. And from that, uh, general business, Council Member Cole. I have nothing at this time. Council Member Wong. Yeah, I would just want to say um, thank you to all those that contributed to the polar plunge. Um, the fire department, the PD, and myself raised over um, about $2,600, um, and that exceeded the goal of 1900 So thank you for supporting the Special Olympics. Um, secondly, happy Black History Month. And then for those that are celebrating uh, Lunar New Year's, Happy New Year's, that's today. Um, that's all I have. Was it cold in the plunge? Tell us about the plunge. <laughs> I want to hear it. it. It was fun. It was great. I would do it every week. I, I, I felt re-energized after. Was there a hot tub afterwards or no? No. No? No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Council Member Peterson. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to the advanced elected leadership uh, seminar this weekend in um, Plymouth. Uh, 100 Years Basketball North High. Um, there's going to be a program this Saturday at 1 o'clock. There's going to be a basketball game and an alumni game. So please come out for that. There's a lot of history. Um, um, so they're working hard at that. Up, That'll be at North High School gym at 1 o'clock. Ramsey County Legal Local Government, I sat in on the legislature uh, panel, and that was interesting. They have a lot of money 
to spend, and uh, they're all going to be discussing how they're going to spend it. Um, I know ma the mayor was on, you were on the Zoom on that, weren't you? Yeah, so that was that was good. And um, that's all I have. Thanks. Councilmember Thorson. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to follow up on John's comments about um, his concerns about accessing archive material on the website. I think that's something we need to look into. Uh, I know I, I've tried to access um, things in the past through the search bar and it just doesn't seem to work either. Things will come up and you click on it and it just says not available. So that's been a little frustrating as an elected official trying to get information without having to come down here and burden staff with looking stuff up. So uh, I think it is a step in the wrong direction if we used to have a wide variety of archive material available and now it isn't and if that's attributed to this change over to Civic Plus uh, or whatever the problem is you know I think we need to look into resolving that um, <clears throat> and I just you know now that we finally have the lease with the community center and Coke Grow resolved um, it's disappointing to hear that they're gonna be leaving the community at some point um, personally I think it's it's uh, not a good situation and now it's on us as a council to actually come up with a plan for that facility and because uh, it's impacting his business and potentially other businesses so we can't just have this we don't know attitude in my opinion I think we need to have a conversation about that soon and and there's a lot of unanswered questions that we need to have answers for and put a solid plan together on what that facility is going to be used for in the future so and you know I'm personally open to having that holdover period if, if we certainly don't have a tenant lined up it wouldn't make sense to just say see you bye um, and especially if there is some other interested party I know market rate was discussed as a concern I would hope that if there's an interested party coming in and they're not going to pay what we're currently getting that we would at least extend that offer to our existing tenant to continue to recap a higher rent rate versus just again you know kicking them out so um, and then he's expressed some concerns about the heat going out in the bit facility um, for us to have a plan to relocate them I think is it's just not doable <laughs> and so I mean if it gets to that I would imagine that you know a proration of time if he's not able to conduct business that we would look at prorating his rent for the time that it's down that would be my suggestion rather than trying to deal with the logistics of trying to find a place for him to relocate I don't really think that's something that we need to be doing so that's all I have uh, okay, I hope I, I didn't come across that we're just gonna leave you out hanging you know I hope that it's gonna be that you know see you later goodbye is not something that I was trying to, okay uh, okay. Right. 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 No. We're going to work together on on this. So. Thank you. Uh, we did uh, f uh, the food shelf and toy shelf did find a home uh, I might have mentioned at the last council meeting I'm not sure if we did or not so the food shelf and toy shelf did find a home on the corner of 2nd and Sepala at the old workforce center uh, so they will be moving into that facility sometime by early spring uh, my guess is early spring. Uh, Council Member Wong is actually working with the uh, food shelf in regards to uh, kind of what she does on her full-time position. I don't know if you want to mention anything about that or not. Uh, sure. So the University of Minnesota Extension. Why don't you turn your, turn your mic on? Yeah, the University of Minnesota Extension in the Health and Nutrition Program is working with the food shelf. They're super or food shelf consultants and so there's a team of those folks um, helping 
for that helping this food shelf make that transition. And so they're really excited. Um, this has been a it's a big change. Um, they're moving into a 10,000 square foot building from, I mean, little little pockets of, of space. So it's gonna really um, provide a lot of opportunity for clients to, you know, really navigate the food shelf with some dignity and they're excited. Thank you. It's gonna help with the volunteers down there too because right now they're kind of elbow to elbow and up and down stairs that probably aren't the best way to be maneuvering food and stuff in that facility. So uh, at this time, anything else? Last minute items? If not, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Council Member Thorson. Second. I was going to say everybody wants to stay, don't you? <laughs> Second by Council Member Cole. Any discussion? If not, all those... Favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.